Hello again folks, uh, not quite a retro unboxing tear down for you this evening, um, but certainly uh, given the fact that it's only 16 years old, you would definitely class this as an antiquated piece of technology. It's the Palm 3 XE, uh, yeah, it's a PDA, you know, personal data assistant or organiser, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I thought we'd unbox it uh, and have a look at it. This was given to me by uh, a colleague who found it when he was moving house and said, you know, rather than throwing it in a charity shop or binning it, in fact, yeah, I think he was just going to bin it, he said, uh, or asked me if I wanted it. So I thought, yeah, we'll have a look at it and, and do a little tear down. So we'll look around the box, yeah, Palm Incorporated, yeah, Santa Clara, USA. And uh, yeah, it shows you the set of accessories you get, you know, various things. What have we got on here? AOL Mail. Remember those guys? Uh, all your different uh, internet connectivity and that good stuff. Applications that are available for it. Lotus Organizer and all that sort of stuff. Um, powerful. What is it saying? Powerful yet simple internet and email access. Thousands of solutions. Easily upgradable. Safeguards your data. And then on to the end. Have a look at the specifications. Um, what have we got? Yeah, comes with all that stuff. Um, Palm OS 3.5. I think this one can be upgraded to 4.1 from what I read on Wikipedia. Storage capacity 8 megabytes. Yeah, 400 emails, 50 Amazon applications, 8 years worth of appointments, 8,000 addresses. Does MD know 8,000 people? Um, not sure I do. Um, yeah, infrared port, backlit display, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. Yeah, lots of stuff. Um, yeah, you needed a kit for USB and Macintosh uh, compatibility. So, we'll have a look at it. Like I say, this uh, dates back to uh, 2000. Uh, inside the box, we get the usual paraphernalia, registration cards, you know, quick start guide, handbook, which is fairly hefty. There's about a quarter of a rainforest in this uh, box. Uh, little stickers, CD, yeah, blah, 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 Registra uh, wanted registration cards and a little uh, graffiti reference card. Now, the graffiti, which I will go on and show you, is uh, not very intuitive, um, as I will show you later on. So, of course, what do we want to see? Um, the unit itself. Here we go, the Pam XE. Quite a neat little thing, you know, uh, quite compact. Um, takes just two uh, AAA batteries, which is quite nice, you know, easily replaceable. Uh, and of course, um, there will be some form of, uh, you know, data backup in here. It does stay on here. Device may lose data if batteries are moved for more than a minute. So I would probably think there'll be some type of uh, capacitor in here, uh, you know, for that, you know, interim backup as you're changing the batteries. Uh, there we go, Palm Incorporated again, usual C marks, etc. I've got reset switch, a contrast, um, what do you call it, contrast uh, adjustment knob or wheel. We've got our infrared data port, remember when that was popular before Bluetooth. Uh, got our stylus. And on the bottom, which is quite a nice feature, I think, is the actual uh, port uh, that you connect it to. And you can, you know, use this port for a number of things. Uh, but it's it's got a nice spring-loaded uh, protective cover, which is fairly flush and, and would stop a uh, fingerprint getting on that uh, gold and corrode. Well, not that the gold plate would corrode, but eventually when it gets through to the copper, uh, then of course it would start corroding. So it's nice to have that uh, protective cover on there. And opening the unit up, there we go, so the flip over cover. Uh, there's an area in the lid for the, the stickers for various things. And yeah, this is a unit. To turn it on, we just press the green button, and as you can see, it just powers on. Now, where's my contrast? And we'll see if we can get that clear for you. Now that's done. I'll turn it right up. That's probably the best, um, best setting. I'll just get this stylus out again. So yeah, um, it's got all the features you would expect, address book, calculator, all that good stuff. We've got a hot sink, uh, which was you know quite a popular application in the sort of nineties and two thousands. Um, yeah, and that was basically how you synchronised it. You put it into, you know, plugged it into your computer, and it would synchronise all your data to Outlook, 
and uh, you know emails etc etc uh, really good um good little bit of software i used to use it. i had an old uh, hewlett packard pda uh, running windows ce i think it was but uh, you know it was a much more modern than this uh, and you know, it used hot sync so pretty good little uh, bit of software um, I don't know if it's obvious to you, uh, and it's certainly not the ca camera angle, but I think the, the screen almost looks as if it's twisted slightly. Um, I don't know if you can see that from the camera. Maybe it's just my eyes, but yeah. Um, and to use it, obviously, we can just touch you know, touch the screen if we want, or we can use the stylus, um, and we can use the, you know, the slide bar at the side there. We do have some uh, hotkeys, uh, you know, for... You know your calendar, your phone book, to do list, um, and memo. And this is what I was saying about the um, the memo. Um, sorry, not the memo, but the graffiti as they call it. We've got this. I think it's uh, maybe 120 by 120 pixel area, and um, th but the whole screen is uh, you know a touchpad. So this screen's uh, you can touch the screen. But there's also this area here which gives us some other functions. We've got home, um, you know, little menu, cal direct access to calculator, and we've got a search function. Um, and we can just go home just by tapping on there. But yeah, there is this additional area in the middle which looks a bit like a touchpad on a laptop, but it's not. Um, if I go to memo, this is where we can actually uh, use the stylus to actually recognise a handwriting. Now, A, you wouldn't actually, if I try and do A, as you would write it with a pen, it comes up O, okay? Because the way you actually write A is like an inverted V, and you can see that that's done A there. Um, B, yeah, of course, is as you'd expect it, although it has uh, written I as well. Um, but um, F is like a, an inverted L. Really, really, really strange. As I say, not very intuitive. So you would actually have to learn these various commands. Uh, as you can see, K, for instance, looks absolutely nothing like a K. Um, and there was obviously you've got then get the this sort of confusion of how you do your punctuation. I mean, look at how you do your apostrophes and quote marks. You know. Very, very difficult. I suppose once you've done it for a while and, and you've mastered it, uh, it would be fairly, you know, fairly easy. But to the, the, the casual user, you would just find this frustrating, I would have thought. Um, to delete um, a backspace, we just do that. But um, that's pretty much it. One other thing, um, I will show you the backlight. Now, I know it probably won't come up very well on the camera, but we can see it's almost like a gold colour background with um, you know black LCD, you know the black LCDs you'd expect on top if I turn on the backlight by pressing and holding the power button now it doesn't come up but it is horrifically bad, I mean really really bad, it almost goes kind of um, although it's not reversing the polarity of the LCD it kind of looks like that but the, the text becomes a, a fluorescent green almost on a sort of yellowy background and it is really terrible to, to look at um, and I have tried it in the dark and it is practically unusable, really not a very good uh, system. But that's uh, the unit itself, uh, we just press the green button to turn it off. In the box as well we get a, a dock uh, which has got a 9 pin RS232 and uh, yeah there's a, a connector and you know you just slide it in and automatically that little shutter on the back uh, goes up and it docks quite nicely and then what you do is you just press the button and uh, your software would start synchronizing now one other thing that was in the box and this is a relic uh, an item of days gone by it's this as you will see Ericsson uh, phone cable now, before we had GPRS and 4G and all that good stuff, and indeed before in the homes we had broadband, we used to have a thing called dial-up. Uh, and if you don't know what dial-up uh, is, then just Google it or thing. But it's basically uh, carrying data using tones over a phone line. Really unreliable, really, really slow. Absolutely 100% unusable uh, in today's, uh, you know, 
this day and age, uh, really not uh, not usable at all. But when you're on the go, you couldn't uh, plug this into the phone line. Actually, you could. Um, you could buy a kit to plug it into a standard uh, wall socket, you know, phone socket. But, you know, as um, mobile phones are becoming more prevalent, um, you know, Sony Ericsson, uh, I forget what particular model this one, but I definitely had a, a Sony Ericsson. Was it a G538 or 358 or something it was? It had the nice colour faceplate and the screw and antenna with different coloured uh, rings to go on your antenna. I really liked that phone. It was really chunky, but absolutely bomb proof but what you would do would be plug this into the bottom of your palm plug this into the bottom of your mobile phone and essentially um, your phone would act as the phone socket in the wall it would use dial up uh, networking um, and I don't know if this will work if I plug it in oh the connection between you yeah blah 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 okay oops, here we go so there's a hot sink so we've got a local so it's detected that there's a, a connector connected, a dock connector connected, or some sort of data uh, cable. Um, and it's asking, do we want local? So that's to the computer using the cradle. And we could just uh, you know log in using that. Or we could select modem. Now, there's a couple of options. We can do infrared to the phone. So if your phone had an infrared port, you could use that for data transfer. But again, that's just inducing another uh, problem into you know really slow internet um, but yeah, with a PAM modem, which is an external thing, a Wattpad modem made by IBM, serial to phone or serial to modem. So what we'd do would be select serial to modem, we'd bring up our phone book, uh, we'd put our um, phone number in there and click OK, and it would basically use the mobile phone, at, like I say, as a modem connected to phone line and uh, dial in and allow you to sync with uh, a remote server. So, fairly fairly modern I suppose even for you know 16 years ago year 2000 but of course what's inside it I know that's what you want to see that's what I want to see um, so we'll see how easy this is to take apart now having looked at it there's only a few screws it appears only to be four screws on the um, outside something I found not by any means really interesting but the batteries, uh, the battery uh, terminals, positive and negative, but we've got two springs at one end and two sort of pads at the other. I don't know why they didn't just, uh, you know, keep it standard with the, the springs going to the negative and the pads for the, the positive. A little bit strange. <clears throat> so, like I say, only four screws visible on this. I don't think there's one underneath there. Oh, and that came across, uh, came open really easy, easily. Right, so not a lot to it by the looks of things. Um, Actual dock connector is actually fully integrated onto the onto the motherboard, if you want to call it that. Um, we do have an option. I've just noticed um, that it's got a provision on here for what appears to be um, a RAM card. Now it might not be, and if MD is fully aware of what this is, please let me know. But it certainly looks like that is a, a slot for a type of memory, um, even down to this off-centre, thicker um, trace there, if you know what I mean. That's normally where there's a, a plastic uh, spacer with the, the slot in your, your RAM stick. So possibly uh, other versions of that um, did have that. Um, some space for some diodes as well. That's obviously an infrared transceiver up there. I'm not too sure what that is. Um, I'm not too sure at all. What does that say? LS2, possibly. So Q8 is a transistor. R cap. Cap. That's our battery backup, if essentially. Um, we've got a 10... Is that 5.5 volt? Point, sorry, point 0.10 farad can't really see what it says but yeah that's just a little 
not a super carp, but I th well, I think you probably class it as a super carp. But yeah, that's just a, a battery backup essentially. Uh, whilst this, uh, whilst you're changing your batteries, get a few little inductors, some fairly chunky uh, diodes there, uh, and we've got this chipset down here. I'm not sure an LC one three eight five CG, whatever one of those is, uh, and that's pretty much it. So we'll take this. Um, down a little bit further and just <clears throat> take this uh, little ziff socket open it up and we'll disconnect which is presumably the um, LCD connector like so and this just looks like it just clips out so there's no visible screws here Hmm. This doesn't want to come out, I don't think, very easily. Ah, wait a second. There we go. Right, so. Here's, uh, in fact, we'll go with this first. This is probably fairly a bit more, sim uh, a bit more simple. Yeah, so we've got our um, LCD display, okay? And um, we've got uh, the touch screen, as you can see, the four... Um, contacts or traces coming over for the touch screen that's going on the control board and we've got um, oh, what do you call it I forget what you call it but you're yeah, basically the connection from the, the layers within the LCD and they're just soldered on and uh, if you look on here I know uh, <clears throat> was it Clive Big Clive possibly Dave Jones um, opened up something in LCD and I actually had a, a chip bonded <clears throat> onto the the flat flex cable and certainly that's what's on here and on this one it's got a similar arrangement but with some sort of epoxy of that over the top and then we've got our little uh, driver chips what's this using L LP324M whatever those are um, yeah version A1 few uh, resistors on there nothing else at all so that's just a, a you know LCD assembly driver chip and touch screen screen and that's all coming on you know that's a 10 or 15 maybe 20 uh, conductors on the, the flat flex there okay so the last but not least is the um, you know the, the back end of the PCB so what we've got on here we've got uh, a Motorola Dragon Ball that's a uh, MC68EZ328PU16V. This is the 16 megahertz uh, processor. I don't know what that's saying. Is that an AMD chip? I'm not sure. AM29LV1600B. Uh, uh, that's obviously going to be a memory. Uh, well, possibly memory. This equally could be memory. I'm not uh, all fair with all my chips. But um, yeah, this Hyundai uh, 8 megabytes is the memory on board this. So possibly that's 8 megabytes. And certainly uh, on the more upgraded uh, model, that might be populated with what would appear to be the same chip. So potentially this came in a 16 megabyte model uh, and that could be uh, populated on there. I've got a crystal in here, uh, now this could probably, or is more likely to be for the, the clock. Um, what's it saying there? S043, again, I'm not uh, brilliant with my crystals and the markings of those, but um, yeah, that's probably for the, the, the clock crystal rather than for the CPU. Um, I can't see any other crystals on here. Uh, I might be totally missing that. I'll maybe watch the video back and go, oh, there it's there. Uh, yeah, but I think that's more the watch crystal rather than the crystal for the uh, to keep the timing for the, the processor. Hmm. 
No. Unless that's it, I'm not sure. But that looks more like a diode. This one here, 4.7-35. Could be. Da. In fact, no, that, that's possibly a cap. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm waffling on. Yeah, that is the Palm 3XE. Uh, not a particularly interesting teardown in terms of what was inside it. I think it's mainly uh, pretty much what we'd expect to be inside it. But, as always, if you found it interesting or enjoyed it, then please, uh, as always, like and subscribe. Um, and until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Cheers.